Welcome everybody to the celebration of the Mass of the Baptism of the Lord. Uh, this Sunday, that's the feast that we're celebrating. Uh, again, I want to have a word with the children in a moment, but for those of you who want to look up the hymn, it's going to be that magnificent hymn, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise. And it links together the great events that we're thinking about at this time in the immediate aftermath of the Epiphany. But children, you remember before Christmas, I was encouraging you all to have cribs in your homes and make sure your sacred spaces were being looked after. Well, I just wanted to show you a photograph I took of my crib in my room. You remember, this is the one that my father made probably 70 years ago. There it is. I'm very proud of it. I'm very proud of my dad um, that he did all that work for us and that I've managed to keep it in such good order. And you notice the kings there, they've gone in as well in, in time for the celebration of the Epiphany um, last Wednesday. So, what are we going to think about today with regard to Freddie Freckles? What's the focus that's going to help us? Well, you know, children, when you begin to learn to do joined up writing, don't you feel pleased with yourselves? Maybe some of you haven't even reached that stage yet. But you know when you get there, then your mind is beginning to work well. And when we can do joined up writing, probably our minds are doing more joined up thinking. And I think that's way, one way of thinking about things on this feast of the baptism of our Lord. Because we've leapt sort of 30 years from the crib in Bethlehem, Jesus being born in the stable, and the visit of the, of the wise men that we thought about. And we're leaping now to the moment when Jesus um, comes out after that quiet period of his life, those first 30 years, when he worked away as a carpenter with his father Joseph in Bethlehem, and then started his special mission uh, for his father. And he was baptized by John the Baptist in the River Jordan. So there are a number of events that the church asks us to link up with that, um, most notably the Epiphany, the feast that we've just celebrated, but also an event that followed not long afterwards when Jesus, with his first disciples, went along to a wedding reception and they ran out of wine, the marriage feast at Cana. So I'm just going to try and help everybody, children and grown-ups, to do a little bit of joined-up thinking today as we go through our Mass. And if you listen to the words of the hymn carefully, you'll see the Church is inviting us to join those various events together. So I'm going to sing the first three verses, and then I'll sing the last two at the end. Songs of thankfulness and praise, Jesus, Lord, to thee we raise, manifested by the star to the sages from afar. Branch of royal David's stem, in thy birth at Bethlehem, Anthems be to thee addressed, God in man made manifest. Manifest at Jordan streams, prophet, priest, and king supreme, and at Cana wedding guest, in thy Godhead manifest. Manifest in power divine, changing water into wine. Anthems be to thee addressed, God in man made manifest. Manifest in making whole, palsied limbs and fainting soul. Manifest in valiant fight, quelling all the devil's might. Manifest in gracious will, ever bringing good from ill. Anthems be to thee addressed, God in man made manifest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. No Brother James today, he's travelling south on special business for his order, the Delamine brothers, but we had had a chat anyway about the fact that we've gone into this new lockdown and that maybe as I'm managing by myself for the next few weeks probably, 
the fewer people who uh, we're bumping into, even though we know them well and we're hoping nobody's caught this dreaded virus, um, nevertheless, it keeps us that little bit safer. So there we are. We pray for Brother James on his journey. We pray for one another. We pray that the Lord will help us to celebrate this Maths worthily. And so, as always, we ask him to forgive us anything we've done wrong. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We'll just sing the chorus of the clapping Gloria before we say the Gloria. Gloria. Gloria in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that we, your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Now, we've the option on this Feast of the Baptism to use the first two readings from Year A, and I'm choosing that option today, so if you are following in your missals, um, you need to go to Year A for the first two readings, and then we have the Gospel of Mark, which is the Gospel that will run through Year B, which, of course, we're now in. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I have endowed him with my spirit, that he may bring true justice to the nations. He does not cry out or shout aloud or make his voice heard in the streets. He does not break the crushed reed nor quench the wavering flame. Faithfully, he brings true justice. He will neither waver nor be crushed until true justice is established on earth, for the islands are awaiting his law. I, the Lord, have called you to serve the cause of right. I have taken you by the hand and formed you. I have appointed you as covenant of the people and light of the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to free captives from prison, and those who live in darkness from the dungeon. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord will bless his people with peace. O oh, give the Lord, you sons and daughters of God, Give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord the glory of his name. Adore the Lord in his holy court. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord's voice resounding on the waters. The Lord on the immensity of waters. The voice of the Lord full of power. The voice of the Lord full of splendor. The Lord will bless his people with peace. 
The God of glory thunders in his temple. They all cry, glory. The Lord sat enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will bless his people with peace. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. The truth I have now come to realise, he said, is that God does not have favourites, but that anybody of any nationality who fears God and does what is right is acceptable to him. It is true, God sent his word to the people of Israel, and it was to them that the good news of peace was brought by Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is Lord of all people. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth, and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, and because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. In the course of his preaching, John the Baptist said, Someone is following me, someone who is more powerful than I am, and I am not fit to kneel down and undo the strap of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. It was at this time that Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised in the Jordan by John. No sooner had he come up out of the water than he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit, like a dove, descending on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. My favour rests on you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, there we have those wonderful readings. And as I was suggesting to you at the beginning, I think what the church is saying to us so soon after Christmas, so soon after the great celebrations of the birth of Jesus as a baby on the 25th of December, and then just last Wednesday, 12 days later, we had the Feast of the Epiphany, and that is called the Feast of the Manifestation of God to the world through Jesus. In other words, the point I made very strongly on the Feast of the Epiphany, that Jesus hadn't come just for his own Jewish people, and we're reminded of that in the readings today, especially in the Acts of the Apostles, Peter telling the people that Jesus had come for all people. And so the Feast of the Epiphany tells us that, and the, the wise men who come from the East, they represent all of us coming with their gifts. And now the church, as I say, wanting us to have not just joined up writing, but joined up thinking, putting the whole jigsaw together, is already moving us on so that we can start thinking about why Jesus came, that he grew up and was able to go and speak his Father's will and his Father's work to all people. And he did it not just by speaking about it, but by doing it, by healing people, by blessing people, by looking after people, and by teaching us how to pray. And you know the church, in thinking at this particular time, you may have noticed in that hymn, starts to suggest that we think of all sorts of different things that help us with this joined up thinking. So on this feast, the baptism of our Lord, we think about Jesus himself being baptised. Now, he didn't need baptism quite the way we do, but it was the starting point for his ministry, for his father, to go out and do the work of saving the world. And when we are baptised, we become his adopted brothers and sisters, as we've said so often. So now we are brothers and sisters of Jesus, children of the Father, and with a job to do. 
it's our job also to bring this hope and this great message of joy and peace to our world today. And so that word manifestation, did you notice how many times the word manifest came into that hymn? That God was being manifest through Jesus all the time, beginning with him as a little baby in Bethlehem and the kings coming to see him, but then as he did his work, doing the work that Isaiah spoke about, bringing justice and peace to all the nations. And that message is the same today as it was 2,000 years ago. And now it's our responsibility to bring that message to others. Because we too have been baptized. And remember, the water of baptism speaks to us of cleansing, of washing away all the bad things. And just as when we get dirty, uh, we have to have a good wash. And goodness me, everybody's being reminded at the moment of how important it is to keep clean, to make sure we keep washed, keep this awful virus away. But that's true too of our hearts and our souls, that we stay pure and clean. But then the water also gives us life. I have to be honest, I hadn't been watering the plants properly, so I've had to sort them out a little bit, but they have got some more water now. And of course, these beautiful roses are just stay magnificent. But you know how important it is. We need water to stay alive. The doctors are always telling us we must drink a lot. So that whole baptismal message is about life, having the life of God within us. And then we're reminded, uh, interestingly enough, about another event um, so we've linked the epiphany with the baptism of Jesus, this manifestation of, of God, but also with the story that is to follow when Jesus begins his public ministry and goes to a wedding feast where they run out of wine. You remember it was Mary who realized the embarrassment of the family and said to Jesus, please do something about it. And to begin with, it didn't look as if Jesus felt he ought to or wanted to, but he did. He did what his mum asked him to do. And dramatically, uh, although they would run out of wine, there was all this wine there. Jesus prayed over the water, and the water now became wine. And of course, the church is wanting us to have joined up thinking, uh, as well as joined up writing. It's leading us to think about what happens at Mass, that we take the wine and we pray over it, and this wine becomes the precious wine of the New Testament, the new wine that Jesus turns into himself. This is my body this is my blood, this is Holy Communion, this is how we keep the life of God alive in us, this is how we make God manifest. You see, we're beginning to make all these connections. This is what the church wants us to do right at the start of this new year. And we'll be listening to Mark's gospel through this year of how he unfolds the story for us. Mark is very pithy, he puts it all together in very short, clear statements, and we'll be listening to that and thinking about it through the year. So there we are, I hope that's got the message home loud and clear today, children, and that you'll not only have joined up handwriting, but joined up thinking too. And in that spirit, we're now going to make our act of faith. As usual, we'll use the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's bring our prayers to God our Father, as we always do, beginning by praying for Pope Francis, Archbishop Malcolm, our diocese, our families, our friends, our world, our country. There are so many things to pray for. The Lord knows who we want to pray for today. But let's just pause again and think of people who may have asked us to pray, people that we know are in need, are suffering perhaps, maybe even have the virus or are frightened about the virus. We pray for the doctors and nurses who are struggling to help people who are in trouble and all those who are trying to get the vaccine to everybody who needs it. Lord, help all these people and bless them. Lord, in your goodness, Hear our prayer. As usual, I have a number of intentions that people have asked me to pray for. Do you know Rena Gradwell is still clinging to life? Her daughter 
Marie Colette informed me this morning she hasn't been able to eat or drink now uh, for a few weeks, but somehow she's clinging to life. It's, it's very difficult at these times. So we pray the Lord may peacefully take her to his kingdom in heaven. We pray for Rod, Brother James's brother-in-law. I checked with Brother James uh, even as he was journeying south today. Um, he's still struggling in hospital, but they're hoping um, that as he slowly improves, by hopefully the end of this week, he might be able to get better and go home. We continue to pray for Margaret Foster's sister, Angela. Can we pray for Sadie Jameson, whom I anointed, who I anointed this week? Um, as far as I know, she is still alive, but she's very close to death, so we pray for her and her family. And we've had some deaths recently. We were praying for Father Francis Allenson, Frank Allenson, earlier in the week. He died about three o'clock this morning, I think three o'clock, half past three. The wonderful um, Sister Veronica, who's been looking after him, uh, was with him, went to the hospital in the early hours of the morning and was praying the rosary with him when he died. Sister Veronica, we're hugely grateful to you. Thank you. We pray that he's now with our Lord in heaven. and Pray for his sister Kathleen. We also pray for Joan Howard. I anointed her yesterday, and she too died last night. Can we pray for those who've recently died? Joe McNamara. We also remember Jill Power, and uh, think of Patrick, uh, her husband, and the family as they grieve at this time. And we again remember Catherine uh, Casper, Father Casper's sister, Father Casper, the Redemptorist parish priest in London, and uh, Father Casper's brother, who's a student with us in Zimbabwe, I believe also has the virus um, and is struggling health-wise. So we pray for him at this time. And can we pray for Anne Parks, the sister-in-law of Liz Morris, who's recently died? And then, please, could you remember the funerals that are coming up? There's Patrick Delaney here on Wednesday at Bishop Eaton, Richard Taylor at Bishop Eaton on Thursday, uh, Kieran Kavanagh in St. Mary's on Thursday, John Cronin in St. Mary's on Friday, Elizabeth Ralston here at Bishop Eaton on Friday. And then we remember those whose anniversaries occur at this time. Mark Gossage, whose anniversary is tomorrow, Sunday the 10th. John Kevin Hughes, whose anniversary is on the 12th. Peter MacDonald on the 14th. And Helen MacAndrew on the 15th. Lord, grant eternal rest to those who've died Strengthen and bless us with all the graces we need at the moment, especially as we struggle with the pandemic. Bless our world, bless the people of America at this difficult time of the changeover to a new president. Lord, we beg the prayers of Our Lady, our Mother of Perpetual Succor, and our Mother who was given to us as you died on the cross. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant that what we've asked in faith we may indeed obtain through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. My brothers and sisters pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, O oh, come let us adore him, O oh, come let us adore him, O oh, come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. We prepare for Holy Communion, praying in the best way we know, in the very words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us, receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, I eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring me condemnation, but health in mind and body. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And before I receive Holy Communion, may I pray with all of you joining in this Mass in your homes, and pray that you may make a spiritual communion at this moment, recognizing that how much you would love to receive our Lord in Holy Communion, that being not possible, that you can make a spiritual communion, asking him to give you all the graces that come to you when you receive Holy Communion. And I pray especially for the children, and particularly for this year's First Communion classes. I hope you don't think we've forgotten you. We will be looking for ways in which we can get you ready and hopefully this year in the summer we will be able to receive you or to give you Holy Communion that you will be able to receive communion uh, around the usual time. We'll, we'll work out something, please God. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. are just a couple of other intentions. I realize that I only mentioned the funerals that are coming up this week, but I'd ask you to remember Michael Bentley and also Vincent Hawkins, who've died recently too, and their funerals are the following week. Um, I knew uh, Vin Hawkins pretty well because, uh, and I always remember his son's funeral not that long ago, also Vincent. So. Our hearts go out to Marion uh, and to all the family, big family, so I know it's been a long struggle. We pray with great affection for Vin, and I'm sure that he's now met our Lord face to face and is praying with us and for us. I'm very confident of that, as indeed with all those who die lovingly in the Lord. just have a, a few quiet moments in thanksgiving
Behold the one of whom John said, I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So as always, thank you for joining me for this Mass. Um, I didn't anticipate that we were going to be in this situation where we wouldn't um, be able to have Masses in the church as well as having this recorded Mass. Um, but there we are, the situation has become very difficult and I feel it was the right decision. As you know, we're a fairly elderly community here. We're waiting for the vaccine. Um, we've just got to be patient uh, along with all of you, although I know a lot of people who've already received the vaccine. Um, and also uh, we're trying as far as possible, people working for home, our administrators do a fantastic job. Inevitably, because of the funerals, they sometimes have to come into the office to make sure everything's organized. But everything else for the time being is suspended again, so um, sadly we're having to postpone the baptism, some of which we'd rebooked. But um, please God, we're going to come through this calmly. We'll stay um, as attentive and careful as we can. Um, and I'm sure that the Lord will continue to, to bless and strengthen us. So let's keep, um, keep our nerve, as it were, and, and hopefully uh, we are coming into better times. It's a beautiful sunny day today, uh, and I did manage to skip around the park, um, avoiding everybody uh, as carefully as I could, and with my mask at the ready in case people got too close. But there we are, so we'll keep trying to stay fit and well, and um, hopefully in a few weeks' time things will change, and we'll, beginning, uh, we'll be able to get back to something nearer what we would regard as normal. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Oh, just let me remind you, children, I showed you that crib. Um, if you've got photographs of your cribs, there are quite a few going up now on the website. Um, as far as the Christmas season's concerned, well, we can keep it going, and I have done the last few years. We've kept the cribs in the church until the feast um, of the presentation of our Lord at, at the beginning of, um, of February, Candlemas Day, the 2nd of February. So, um, We'll, we'll keep the, the, that Christmas focus as well, even as we're moving into ordinary time this week. Okay, so if you want to send photographs of your crib, um, please do so, and Margie's putting them up on, on the different websites for Bishop Eaton and St. Mary's. Thank you for that. So here we go again. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. And we've got the last two verses of Songs of Thankfulness. So hopefully that hymn now makes a little bit more sense to all of us. Sun and moon shall darken be, stars shall fall, the heavens shall flee. Christ will then like lightning shine, all will see his glorious sign. All will see the judge appear. All will then the trumpet hear. Thou by all wilt be confessed. God in man made manifest. Grant us grace to see thee, Lord mirrored in thy holy word. May we imitate thee now, and be pure as pure art thou, that we like to thee may be at thy great epiphany, and may praise thee ever blessed, God in man made manifest.